member of the Senate uh, Committee on Banking, most distinguished um, Senator uh, Rafiu. Um, other very distinguished senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, member uh, of this Committee on Banking and Finance. Um, my colleagues from the Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, our Deputy Governors, Directors, uh, other distinguished personnel that are here present this morning, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, please permit me to say <coughs> that my name is Godwin Ifa in Chukwe born on August 4th, 1961. I hail from Delta State and from Ika South local government uh, area in Delta State. Um, like this, my resume already said, I attended the University of Nigeria and Suka, graduated in bachelor's degree in finance and banking in 1984, second class opera, and in 1986, also um, bagged my master's in business administration in banking and finance from the same university. Shortly after my bachelor's degree program, I did my National Youth Service Corps program, which is a mandatory program for graduates in the Nigerian, Nigerian educational uh, institutions uh, in 1984. Finished in 1985, proceeded for my master's degree, and then from there graduated in 1986. <coughs> In between the period from my bachelor's degree in YSC and master's degree, and the early part after I graduated from the, my master's in business administration, I had an opportunity to be a lecturer at the University of Nigeria and Suka, and at the University of Nigeria Port Harcourt. During this period, I was involved lecturing mathematics of finance, bank management, as well as the principles of insurance. After that, in 1987, I started my career in banking, beginning from Nigerian American Merchant Bank that was then known as the First Bank Boston. And after, from there, I moved on to Zenith Bank, being one of the pioneer staff of the bank, resumed on July the 16th, 1990, and rose through the ranks at Zenith Bank until I became, I was appointed the managing director and group chief executive of the bank in, on August 1, 2010. For four years, I was the managing director and group chief executive of Zenith Bank. And on June the 3rd, I assumed the position following the approval of the then president and the confirmation of the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, assumed my current position as the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria on June the 3rd, 2014. When I resumed work in, on, June, on June 3rd, 2014, precisely on June 5th, 2014, I unveiled a vision I unveiled a five-year vision to set the tone about what I intend to do or those activities I intend to pursue as the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Like you all know, most important of this is that is the core mandate of the Central Bank of Nigeria as the monetary policy, monetary policy authority in Nigeria. That the primary mandate will be to, to, to pursue price and monetary stability, exchange rate stability and reserve management, and also defending the currency of the country. This is just one out of several other mandates that is enshrined in the Central Bank of Nigeria Act about the responsibilities of Central Bank of Nigeria. The Act also provides that 
The Central Bank of Nigeria shall also be involved in development finance activities, and indeed, this was section 33, subsection 1 of the Central Bank Act. <coughs> so when I, uh, when I unveiled my vision in 20, on June the 5th, 2014, achieving macroeconomic stability was, was, was a most important task. And when you talk about achieving macroeconomic stability, you are looking at keeping the inflation level at acceptable level, keeping the exchange rate at acceptable, stable, and sustainable level, and also looking also at issues bordering on the interest rate. Distinguished senators and ladies and gentlemen, if you, in, in trying to um, determine what did we achieve in the last five years, it is important that we cast our minds back and to begin to say, by June or pre-June 2014, and indeed post-2015 post into 2017, where, what was the state of the Nigerian economy? And now post-2017, what is indeed the state of the Nigerian economy? Distinguished senators, if you cast our minds back, there was a time in this country where precisely sometime around August, September 2008, Nigeria's reserves stood precisely at $62 billion. This was after $22 billion had been used to pay off the Paris Club debt. Between that time, 2008 or 2009 precisely, and into about 2014, we saw a boom in the crude oil market. Crude prices rose, and we are usually say that rose at an astronomical level, averaging at least $110 per barrel over this five-year period. Um, rather unfortunately, reserves plummeted, and by January 2014, reserve had dropped to $40 billion. When I, when I assumed office on June 3rd, 2014, reserve had further plummeted to $37 billion. And unfortunately, immediately after, by about the third quarter of 2014 and into the early part of 2015, Another round of global crisis did set in. This global crisis resulted in a situation where crude prices dropped from all those, what I call the all-time high of those period of uh, averaging $120, $130 per barrel, to indeed as low as $23 in January 2016. As a result of the pressure, at the same time while this was happening and reserve was dropping, as a result of the pressure on, on the reserves, imports were high, exports were, 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 were reducing, export revenues from oil was also dropping dramatically, and we had no choice, and we saw a situation where as a result of the pressure on the reserve, exchange rate had to move. Exchange rate moved at that time from $155 to the barrel, initially moving to 168 naira per barrel, to about 197 naira per bar the, by dollars to the barrel. And after those adjustments were done, we saw inflationary pressures arising from imported inflation, coupled with the fact that we increased the price of petrol and energy prices, the inflationary pressure on the economy became so immense that we saw, aside from seeing reserve plummeting to as low as $23 billion in October of 2016, we saw inflation rising from January 2016, when it was, where it was 9%, to as high as 18.72% in January of 2017. Those were the periods that things were really bad. So I'm trying to say inflation went up, exchange rate had gone up, reserve had dropped, 
And of course, naturally, there was pressure on purchasing power and also the level of unemployment, of course, naturally, not naturally rose. Those were the periods where we say we had macroeconomic instability. But what did we do during this, inter during this period, intervening period? We took a couple of decisions and said, having adjusted the currency from 155 to about 200 naira to the dollar, that there was a need for us, with the support of the fiscal, fiscal and political authorities, that there was a need for us to begin to look at the demand and supply side of, of, foreign exchange, of, of the foreign exchange demand in Nigeria. We went into a regime of restricting foreign exchange. I'm sure some of you will, will not forget in, in a hurry the issue of the imposition of FX restriction on the importation of certain items into the country. This was intended to reduce, to put pressure on imports so imports could drop and somewhat move closer to ex export revenues so we could be able to see less pressure on the reserve. Fortunately, we, we, we've, we've seen imports dropping drastically from as high as almost about uh, 600, um, at that time, almost six, six billion dollars uh, on a quarterly basis to today where it is significantly and drastically lower, uh, even lower than a billion dollars. Now, the issue therefore is with all these pressures, having adjusted the demand and luckily trying to see how we could balance on, on price, which is a foreign exchange rate, we also introduced a couple of intervening actions that is meant that will be, that will be that will help to boost the supply of foreign exchange into the market. We try to encourage people to export so that export earnings can rise. We also tried as much as possible to see how we could encourage various stakeholders that had a responsibility for influencing capital into the country to see to it that. They, they developed a lot more confidence in the Nigerian economy for them to be able to do more business in Nigeria. I'm following a couple of actions that we took, but particularly, and speaking about the, in, in, the, the institutionalization of the investors and exporters window, we felt there was a need for us to have an open, transparent market where people who have foreign exchange should be free to sell their dollar into the market and those who had foreign, who had need for foreign, foreign exchange to buy or import items should be able to uh, procure foreign exchange to import the items that they wanted to bring in. At the time when the investors and exporters window was um, open precisely in April of 2017, as a result of the pressure on the reserves, exchange rate had gone up to as high as 525. And we began a process at that time to open the market of selling dollars into the market. It's just that investors begin to see confidence that we really are, we mean business. Shortly after we started selling, the confidence came up, and then we started to see even the exporters also coming in. And of course, as, as uh, the stakeholders kept coming in, we saw a situation where supply of foreign exchange into the economy became outstripped the, the demand. And of course, naturally, we now saw an appreciation in the currency dropping to the level that is about 360 naira to the dollar today. We have managed to sustain this now for over two years, and we are determined to continue to sustain this level of stability in the foreign exchange market because we do realize that our people and businesses, for them to be able to plan their business, need to be to be sure about the direction of monetary policy. And that is the reason we say that we will continue to maintain the stability in the foreign exchange market. So as a result of these actions, I would say we have seen some macroeconomic stability in the, in the industry or in the, in, the, in, in the economy. Exchange rate now converging substantially at about 360 naira to the dollar. Inflation trending downwards for almost about 25 consecutive months now from about 18.72% in January 2017, now to as low as 11.27% inflation. 
On the area of interest rates, we tried as much as possible, but unfortunately, we haven't quite achieved what we thought we should achieve on interest rate uh, moderation. But if you cast our minds back that sometime in 2016, 2017, that the treasury bills rate was about 18.5%, and today treasury bills rate dropping to as low as about 13%. We believe we've tried, but we still need, we still have a lot of work to do to bring the rates down so the market can read our signals and begin to also flow in the same direction. Aside from macroeconomic stability, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished senators, we also went aggressively to say that we should be able to do something to really boost development because we said that the Central Bank of Nigeria, under the vision that we said in June 2014, will be a people-focused central bank where our downtrodden people are masses, we truly feel the impact of monetary policy in their lives. And that was why we invoked the past and conferred on us in, in, the, in the Central Bank Act to move aggressively into the area of development finance. And because we did it, because we felt, because interest rate was somewhat on a broad basis high in the market, that there was a need for us to really direct attention to some priority sectors in the economy. And in this case, we decided to focus on agriculture and manufacturing. We came up and began to say that we would intervene very aggressively in the area of agriculture and manufacturing by ensuring that if you are going into primary agriculture, you are producing what we need in the country, that you should be able to have good and easy access to credit. And having access to credit meant that you not only having the access, but that you have access at a moderated and low interest rate, and in this case, single digit interest rate. Ladies and gentlemen, we have substantially achieved that. Because by the numbers that we have today, in the last three years, the Central Bank of Nigeria, aside from close to almost 300 billion that, is in, that has been invested in commercial and cultural credit scheme, in some of our real sector support facility, but primarily in the area of supporting our smallholder farmers as, as well as our small and medium enterprises, the Central Bank has granted under, in, uh, under its anchor bra program close to 190 billion naira to over 1.1 million smallholder farmers in Nigeria across different product ranges in Nigeria. We are not talking about rice. We've also extended this to cassava. We've extended it to maize. We've extended this to soya beans. We've extended it to palm oil. And indeed, I am I'm assuring everybody that given this mandate, we'll extend it such that and, I, and it's a promise I make, I make today that in two years, we should be able to see that, that the impact of Central Bank's agricultural program would have permitted all the nooks and crannies in Nigeria. That is a mandate, that, that is a promise that we make today. In the area of the manufacturing sectors, we also said that those who are interested in going into manufacturing ventures that will entail either plant expansion or in investing in new manufacturing products that will see to it that they are able to access our intervention funds at no more than 9%. Having haven't achieved the, a macroeconomic stability in Nigeria with exchange rate, inflation, moderating, and also with our development finance activities, that I worry. Worry in the sense that we just came back from the IMF World Bank program in April. And the world, in the, in, in the, in the world, world Bank, IMF's World Economic Outlook, Nigeria is positioned as a country whose population will grow and rise to over 425 million people by the year 2050. That will present Nigeria as a country with the third largest population in the world, after China and India, and indeed surpassing the United States of America in population. I worry, and I do think that we all should worry, that a lot of work needs to be done to make sure that we are able to put in place policies that will make life good for these 425 people or 450 million people when we are the third largest population in the world. So we, from the Central Bank, from the monetary policy side, have, have come to a realization 
that using the instrumentality of the Anchor Boras program where access to credit is being provided to our masses all over the country, that it will be a way to generate employment and, and boost economic activity amongst our rural population. The results are there for us to see that, that as a result of our Anchor Boras program, where we have disbursed, like I said, almost close to about 190 billion people, not, not under, I mean, we have disbursed over 190 million billion naira to over 1.1 million smallholder farmers, cultivating over 1.3 million hectares of land that we need to do more of this. That as we do this, we, we, we make finance available at low interest rate, we make access to credit easy for our people, and in doing this, we will be able to create jobs for them and improve the livelihood of our people. That is a sole mandate that we make, and distinguished senators, I am very optimistic that this can be achieved. Uh, for, for time, I think I need to make it brief. Um, I thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak with you.